Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tomasz and in today's video we're going to talk about how to declare an array in Excel VBA. Okay, so as I said in the introduction, in today's video we're going to talk about a declaration array declaration in VBA and I'm not going to show you the definitions from official uh, Microsoft Office website or something like that I'm going to I want to show you my approach and how I understand it and how I'm using it in my macros and in my code so I prepared a uh, uh, worksheet for you guys here it is where we're going to go through three prepared for this video methods and the first one first one how to declare an array in Excel VBA is to declare an array almost the same uh, the same way as you're declaring the range. In case of range you need a uh, range type variable and then you need to set this range so you need to use the word set. In case of arrays you're doing almost the same thing but firstly you're declaring an array as a variant type so here and then you're not setting it as in case of range type variable you're just letting this variant type uh, variable to be this range and let's see this let's add this to um, to the watch okay and go and here you can see we created an array 10 elements okay based on this uh, column A so as you can see from uh, from the cell the first cell so cell 1 1 with parameters 1 1 and cell with the um, 10 in rows and 1 in a column. Let's go to the second method uh, for this video. In the second uh, method I prepared for you a loop. In this case it's a simple for loop. Um, uh, but uh, first things first let's start with the beginning. First of all you're starting almost the same so you're declaring an array uh, uh, variant type variable and then um, you can say you're redeclaring it but this time you're uh, telling the code the size of the array so in our case we uh, want to create an array which is uh, which starts with the uh, element number one and ends on the uh, last element of this uh, first column in this uh, prepared uh, worksheet and then uh, we're using a for loop you can also use the for each loop but for for this example purpose we're using for loop and we're uh, looping from the first uh, element of this array to the last one and then in the middle of this um, for loop here we have a simple conditional so in case of the values bigger uh, than zero uh, let's put inside of this array uh, this value from the from the worksheet and uh, else if the value is equals or, or less than zero just put inside of the array zero so in case of our code it will look like uh, once again let's see this 
Okay. And here we go, you can see that we created an array with 10 elements and with the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10, just like in the first column of our worksheet. And um, why to use for loop to create an array? Remember that it always depends on the situation, it always depends on the situation in the code. Sometimes your code will require something like that to check the uh, values before you attach them to the array. You can do this like this, so using the for loop or for each loop and do the conditional inside of that. So it, it was just like simple conditional, so checking if it's positive or, or not, but this method can also be useful in other cases. So, so this was the second method and let's go to the third. The third method, as you can see, it's creating an array manually. So in case if you know exactly what's the length of your array and what you need, what you want inside of this array at the beginning, uh, you're, you can use this method. So, of course, at the beginning, um, declaration of variant type variable and then um, you're just letting this variable to be an array and having, in this case, three strings, word1, word2 and word3. And after that I showed you um, the uh, autofilter line. Uh, why? Mostly I am using this method when I know exactly uh, what should I filter out from the whole ba database. Uh, so I'm creating at the beginning an array with those keywords. Um, in this case it's a word 1, word 2 and word 3. And then having a big amount of data or or just having a uh, data or database, I am using those keywords to filter out the values from the range. And in case of auto filters, um, you're just putting this array here. You can put here um, a variable name or just whole array. It works the same. And in this case, let's stop on, on this because we don't have that database, but I just want you to show the array. We need to delete this because it was created in the second method. We need to add this once again. And here you can see that we created an array with three elements, of course, uh, starting with zero and ending on the two where we have in values word 1, word 2 and word 3. So you can so the third method was all about creating an array um, manually from the beginning. And one thing for the end of this video about the creation about the declaration and creation an array that maybe you noticed it but in case of the first method you need to remember maybe let, let's show you uh, this array. Uh, add to watch an array. And you can see that uh, there is a 10 element in this array, but every element got its two parameters, rows and columns. So when you're creating an array similar to that range method, setting the range, you need to remember about those two parameters that even if you're creating an array based on the one column, like uh, in this case, you should always have in mind that every element of this array has two parameters, rows and columns. So even if it's one column, you need to put that column parameter as the second one to uh, call the value from uh, the first, for example, from the first element, 
like like in this case if I would um, put something like this no, uh, maybe let's go here and here we will get an error about which I was talking in one of my videos but if we add that column parameter it's working the second or the third it's working and maybe let's go back to that second method mm, let's go with that and once again add to the watch you can see here that every element in this case every element got only one parameter so if we want to call the value from the for example first element we're just using only one parameter one using the method from the first first example so adding that column parameter will make an error so remember in case of the first method always remember about that column parameter and in case of the second method or the third you just only need that one parameter which stands for that index number so that was all for you guys thank you for watching and thank you for listening i hope you enjoy that please leave a like and subscribe to my channel um, i also invite you to my facebook profile and my website simplexlvba.com when i'm making those articles and based on them next i'm creating these videos um, if you have any idea for the next topic for the article or the video please leave a like and the um, i mean please leave a comment in the comment section uh, i'm reading all the comments so i will i will see that if you comment and once again thank you for all and see you in the next video